All right, so before we talk about the dopaminergic synapse in detail, we'll start with the basic components of a functional synapse. Here we got an axon, and uh, that sort of feeds into um, the presynaptic axon terminal, which is this big, huge bubble here on the left. Over on the right here, um, this uh, is a model of a uh, presynaptic or a postsynaptic cell, and uh, down here in the middle, uh, we have our synaptic gap. So. We won't worry so much about the art here uh, as we will the content. So, all right, so as far as a dopaminergic synapse, why is it important to learn about something like this? Uh, or should be learning about pharmacology? Well, it's important to know uh, the, the beginnings, the, the sequence of events, and the physiology behind these synapses. If you really want to understand how the drugs work, uh, why they work, and what parts of um, the the synapse they actually work in. And um, so we'll start out with uh, the physiology and in later videos we'll talk about uh, more in depth uh, how they work, uh, the different medications, and if you've watched this video you'll know why. So as far as um, this specific synapse, the dopaminergic synapse, we need to start out with um, an amino acid tyrosine. And tyrosine is uh, taken out of our diet, it's in the food that we eat, uh, we can also get uh, tyrosine through uh, uh, L-phenylalanine, and um, basically uh, L-phenylalanine is um, broken down by uh, phenylalanine hydroxylase and uh, converted to tyrosine uh, as well. And uh, that's kind of where um, there's actually a, um, a couple of diseases that will actually uh, hinder that conversion. Um, of phenylalanine and to tyrosine, and thus um, we would need tyrosine supplementation. And so that's for later. So we got tyrosine, it's in the extracellular space, and we need to bring it into the uh, cytoplasm of the cell. And um, how do we do that? Well, we do that with a tyrosine transporter. It's a specific transporter on these um, dopaminergic synapses, um, it, and it, it brings a tyrosine into the cytoplasm of the cell, um, of the axon terminal. At that point, it is uh, converted by an enzyme, tyrosine hydroxylase. And uh, tyrosine hydroxylase converts uh, the tyrosine into L-dopa, um, which is also known as levodopa, or the big word, which is 3,4-dihydroxyphenylalanine. And um, so we have this L-dopa. Um, and it is broken down um, by uh, L-aromenic acid decarboxylase. And uh, that's also known as uh, dopa decarboxylase. It's broken down by um, this enzyme into uh, the functional dopamine, which in this synapse um, is the end product. Um, so. Dopamine is also a precursor for norepinephrine in our body. Um, it's also a precursor, ultimately, for epinephrine as well. Um, so it just depends on uh, where exactly these synapses are um, in relation uh, to the body and whatnot, and, um, and as far as where we go. But here, we're talking about the dopaminergic synapse. Um, we got our dopamine, and so now what do we do with it? How does it work um, in the process? Well, we need to store it. Uh, we need to store it in these little uh, vesicles, um, which are little buckets that basically hold our dopamine. Um, and that way we are able to uh, release it and utilize it when we need it. And when we don't, we have a place to hold on to it. And uh, there's a number of drugs that will actually work as far as um, inhibiting uh, or promoting the transport of the dopamine in and out of these vesicles. And uh, that's why it's important to know this uh, for later on. Um, but so at this point we got a uh, dopamine it's free uh, in the cytoplasm and it is transported into the vesicle um, by a specific transporter uh, it's the VMAT transporter and more specifically uh, there's two of these transporters VMAT 1 and 2 VMAT 2 um, will actually uh, transport the dopamine in the vesicle and uh, VMAT actually stands for vesicular monoamine transporter it'll transport a number of monoamines in and out of vesicles not just dopamine so we got dopamine in our vesicles now um, what's the next step how do we get rid of it 
Um, well, the body tells us to. It uh, elicits a response and uh, releases an action potential into the axon terminal. Um, that action potential um, will actually uh, stimulate um, these little voltage-gated calcium channels um, to activate. And these are on the, um, the plasma membrane of the axon terminal, or the presynaptic um, uh, axon. And activation of these uh, voltage-gated calcium channels will actually cause an influx of calcium from the exocellular space into uh, the intracellular space, um, into the cytoplasm. And um, when that occurs, it will actually cause these vesicles to fuse to the uh, plasma membrane. And uh, when that occurs, um, the, the vesicles will actually exocytose and release the contents, in this case the dopamine, into the synaptic gap. And so here we go, we got our dopamine that's being released into our synaptic gap here. And a few things can happen at this point in time um, with the, the dopamine. Um, one of the things that can occur is it can um, bind right back onto the presynaptic terminal um, with receptors that are either um, autoreceptors or heteroreceptors. Um, and that can do a number of things. Um, in some cases, it'll actually hinder the release of uh, dopamine um, into uh, the synaptic uh, area um, and do that in the short term. Um, it's not a long-term deal, but, um, or it can also bind to uh, the presynaptic, I'm sorry, the postsynaptic uh, cell and um, for receptors on the postsynaptic and cause a response um, in that area. Another thing that can happen is um, it can just be brought right back into um, the axon terminal, um, of the pre presynaptic axon. And so that occurs through a specific transporter, and uh, that's a dopamine transporter. Um, of note, actually, dopamine can actually be transported back in through not just um, dopamine transporters, but also norepinephrine transporters. Um, but in this case, since we're talking about the dopaminergic uh, synapse, we'll use the dopamine transporter. And so once uh, the dopamine is brought back into um, the cytoplasm of the presynaptic uh, axon terminal, there's a couple more things that can happen. Uh, one of the things is it can uh, begin to be metabolized. And um, that occurs through um, enzyme monoamine oxidase. Uh, there's two types, A and B, and dopamine is pretty evenly broken down uh, by monoamine oxidase, A and B, and that is found in the mitochondria of the cell. Um, so the dopamine is uh, broken down into the monoamine oxidase, and at that point in time, um, what occurs is um, it is uh, then broken down by aldehyde dehydrogenase. And at that point in time, we are um, broken down into uh, a byproduct um, called DOPAC, uh, which is a small acronym for 3,4-dihydroxyphenylacetic acid. So DOPAC sounds a little bit easier to say. Um, and from that point, it can diffuse from the neuron, even though I have it shown in the neuron, but it can be diffused out of the neuron and leak out of the axon terminal. Um, where it can be um, broken down by comet, which is a methyl transferase, into uh, vanilla medulic acid, VMA. And then that point, it's excreted in the urine. Um, and why is that important? Well, we can test for um, excessive levels of catecholamines by doing a 24-hour urine uh, test, um, looking for specifically VMA. If it's not metabolized, um, it can also be uh, the dopamine uh, can also be um, released in the cytoplasm and actually taken back up into the vesicle again through VMAT2. And it's fully functional dopamine taken back up into the vesicle through the VMAT transporter where it can be released again. And there we have it.